Hello and welcome to GD Live at PALS with teacher Alex for another GD Science lesson on the topic Elements, Compounds and Mixtures. So many times individual atoms are bonded together with other atoms. A molecule is a particle made of two or more atoms bonded together. If the atoms are the same type, the molecule is classified as an element. An element is a pure substance that is made of only one type of atom. If you're not sure what an atom is, there is another lesson where we talk about atoms in detail and what they are. So, an element is a pure substance made of only one type of atom. A molecule is a particle made of two or more atoms chemically bonded together. Molecules can also be made of two or more different types of atoms. In this case, the molecule is called a compound. A compound is made of two or more elements that have been chemically bonded together. And we can see that in number three, down here, we have two different types of atoms bonded together, indicated by the different colors. Compounds are pure substances that have their own chemical and physical properties, often very different from the properties of the elements they are made of. Compounds have a fixed ratio of atoms of the different elements and can thus be expressed by a chemical formula. Again, there is another lesson that goes into detail on what chemical formulas are and how to construct them. For example, hydrogen a flame is a flammable gas and oxygen another gas. They react together to form the compound water, which is liquid at room temperature and non-flammable. Water has the chemical formula H2O. This means that every water molecule is made of one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms chemically bonded together. A mixture is a blend of two or more substances which are not chemically bonded together. Mixtures are impure substances. The parts of a mixture are not in fixed ratios. The parts of the mixture still keep their physical and chemical properties. Mixtures can be separated by physical means, whereas the atoms in a compound which are bonded together cannot be separated by physical methods. Mixtures can be grouped into two types, homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, where a homogeneous mixture is a mixture in which the composition is uniform throughout the mixture. All solutions, for example, are homogeneous mixtures. A heterogeneous mixture is a mixture in which the composition is not uniform throughout the mixture. Most mixtures are heterogeneous. A phase of a mixture is any part of a sample that has a uniform composition and the same properties. By definition, a pure substance or a homogeneous mixture consists of a single phase. A heterogeneous mixture consists of two or more phases. For example, when oil and water are combined, it's a heterogeneous mixture. They do not mix evenly, but instead they form two layers, and these two layers are the separate faces. So how do we separate mixtures? What are the physical methods we can apply to separate mi mixtures? If uh, we have a solid and a liquid, and we want to separate the solid from the liquid, we can use filtration. If a substance does not dissolve in a solvent, we say that it is insoluble. For example, sand does not dissolve in water. It is insoluble. Filtration is a method of separating an insoluble solid from a liquid. When a mixture of sand and water is filtered, the sand stays behind in the filter paper, becomes the so-called residue, and the water passes through the filter paper. It becomes the filtrate. On the right, we can see an example. We have a beaker containing a mixture of insoluble solid and liquid and the filter funnel and the filter paper prepared over another beaker. The mixture of insoluble solid and liquid is powered into the filter funnel and is filtered and the solid particles remain in the filter paper. They are not able to pass through. They are the residue, the liquid separated from the solid, the remaining liquid in the new beaker is the filtrate. How do we separate a solid from a liquid if the solid does dissolve and is soluble? We can use evaporation. 
It's used to separate a soluble solid from a liquid. For example, copper sulfate is soluble in water. Its crystals dissolve in water to form copper sulfate solution. During evaporation, the water evaporates away, leaving solid copper sulfate crystals behind. Again, the example on the right, we have our solution. It is heated so that the water can evaporate. Over time, the water will evaporate. The solution becomes more concentrated and crystals start to form. Until all the water has evaporated, leaving only solid crystals, in our case, in our example of copper sulfate behind. What if we want to separate the solvent from the solution? Then we can use simple distillation. It's a method for separating the solvent from a solution. For example, water can be separated from salt solution by simple distillation. This method works because water has a much lower boiling point than salt. When the solution is heated, the water evaporates, the water vapor is collected and cooled and condensed and the liquid is then collected in a separate container. The salt does not evaporate and so it stays behind the previous container. We can see on the right the example again. Here we have our setup for distillation. We have our salt water which is heated and we get pure water vapor. The salt will remain in solution. The water vapor will go into the condenser the condenser consists of two tubes, an inner tube and an outer tube. In the inner tube, the vapor goes through. The outer tube has usually cold water to cool down the vapor in the inner tube. The vapor will condense, form liquid water again, and the water is collected in another beaker. We get pure water. In the end, salt will be left in the round flask and we have all the water collected in the beaker. Something to add here is that every pure substance has its own particular melting and boiling point. One way to check the purity of, a, uh, of the separate liquid is to measure its boiling point. We want to know do we really have pure water now or is it still salt water? We can check it by checking its boiling, boiling point. Every pure substance has a fixed boiling point. If it contains dissolved solids, its boiling point will be higher and over a range. That's it for the content. Let's have a look at a few questions. Connect the terms to the correct place on the chart. One term will not be used. You can pause the video now to solve this question. The answer comes now. On the left we see we have helium and oxygen. We can see the particles in both cases are the same particles. Here we have individual atoms, here we have molecules. But since they are the same types of atoms in both cases, we have an element in the top left. Right side is a compound. We have different atoms chemically joined together to form molecules. Which method can be used to separate a mixture of salt and water to obtain both parts of the mixture? Again, you can pause the video now to answer the question. The answer comes now. The correct answer here is distillation. Since we want to obtain both parts, we cannot use evaporation or crystallization since the water would escape in both scenarios. With distillation, we will have the salt remaining on one side and the water collected on the other side. The apparatus used to separate a mixture is shown. What is the mixture? Again, you can pause the video now. The answer in this case is
calcium carbonate and aqueous calcium chloride. B. This is the correct answer since calcium carbonate is a solid which doesn't dissolve. Aqueous means it is dissolved calcium chloride. In the other scenarios we have two solutions, so filtration won't help here. Ethanol and water, both liquids as well, so both will run through the filter paper. Sand and calcium carbonate are both solids, so they will both remain in the filter paper. The only one we can separate is B. That's it from GD Live at Pals with Teacher Alex for another GD Science screencast. The today's topic was elements, compounds and mixtures. I hope to see you next time for another screencast.